So as cliche as this may sound, I actually kind of feel slightly embarrassed whenever people ask me, like, hey, what's some of your favorite countries? Because then I always come back with France, and I always get one of these looks. I'm guessing because when most Americans think of Europe, like, the first thing that comes into mind is, like, some of the major ones. France, Italy, Germany, and, of course, our beloved Spain. Personally, it's one of the first European countries that I've had the chance to go and explore, and honestly, it just, it just kind of stuck with me. But anyways, today we're going to be diving into a video made by our friends over at Geography Now. They do a phenomenal job documenting things from all around the world, and this is no exception to that. If you want to check out the original, of course, this is a more polished up version. I'm going to be linking it down below in the description box next to some of my social media pages. And without further ado, let's check it out. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished <laughs> 18th century Baroque architecture, and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, penguins? And a multifaceted history that has evolved into a. The French have penguins? One of the most notable nations on the planet. I know, <laughs> I don't see. That just sounds odd. The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, croissant. France is kind of divided into two main parts. Fat boy. Well. 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the Département et Territoire d'Outre-mer, or Dom Tom. And I actually feel like he's missing a few on that list, actually. French Guyana in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect Ooh. because it's so close to the equator of the Earth. And Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas I feel like he missed like Creole. As well, Haiti, that's French Polynesia. My friends out in Haiti, the Pacific, Saint Pierre Miquelon, right off the coast of Canada, Saint Barthélemy, and Saint Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands, as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Kerguelen Islands, the Saint Paul and Amsterdam Islands. You can probably guess who used to own those. The Crozet <laughs> Islands and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks. To the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited and only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. That is so odd. It's, it is one of the very few languages that I have seen in different points of the world. From coast to coast, no joke. Which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual oh. French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France 2020, should so probably Google that. Economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. You know, let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Oh yeah. Under the Look at that. A teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided into 13 regions, including. Corsica and Barbie was pretty accurate with that description. The capital, largest Good city, job. As well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could talk on and on about voilà. what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, à minuit, il y a tout It's such a beautiful city. The busiest airport. I've actually walked around through a lot of Paris. And Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon. Which I highly recommend too, by the way. Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about no way areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. These regions <laughs> contribute their own unique piece of the French because I think it's like part Italian or something like that. It's great because we're going to discuss more about it in. 
If you look at yes. Blake's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhone entangle the entire country north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice oceanic European climate and they don't suffer- Look at how beautiful that is, man. Catastrophes. In fact, out of every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience and only a few spots like in the Caucasus uh -huh. region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees along the border with Spain, the Massif Central- Oh my God, I remember flying over like the Pyrenees mountains. Dude. Mind-boggling. Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the <laughs> largest consumers of cheese with over 1,200 different varieties found all over the country. I would be offended if it wasn't. Larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs and snails. What the heck is a venison? Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect eating, countries in Oh Europe. god. About 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially in Burgundy, the largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the mm, highest consumers of all That is just France, nasty. I don't know, man. I don't even think you could pay me to try it. The Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. The Alps are famous for their charcuterie. Well, that sounds dangerous. Brittany for its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, L'Aveyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France- I actually got a family member there. Best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February yes! All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks. To combat crop wastage on farms, France has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. <laughs> disfigured <laughs> produce, okay. <laughs> machinery, iron, and steel. At least they're doing something about it. Vehicles and pharmaceuticals. <laughs> It's a pretty concept. Pretty cool very, concept. Very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67... It's like being vegan. You have to tell everyone. ...in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population oh. is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is a euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's talk about the white people. Most white French people have some or partial... You just said that so casually, it's almost offensive. ...inhabited <laughs> most of the centralized regions regions of modern day France. That means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies as all three people groups have their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is of course the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part- But I see France more Latin based than the UK, of course. My opinion. Their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition, typically have their own creoles or dialects. France is the most visited country in the world, as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Culture Mind you, the population is heavy. We are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, <laughs> cinema, cuisine. Just threw that in there slightly. Folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. Since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing, anglophone-driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, part parking, email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top regulators, the CSA and CNC, have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language. Are you kidding me? 8 p.m. and half the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. French and new. 
What the heck? Cool figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemists Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history, and they don't want to toss it away. They also- I was raised Catholic, actually. Sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest work weeks with only about- France is doing something right. Average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it. L'heure de l'apéro, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can there you go. Pension at age 62, making one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world, going on strike. Oh God. <laughs> I've been actually seeing a lot of strike posts on Facebook going on in France. Their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make very passionate. Pressure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they Aww. love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are that friendly the type of love as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by some. Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke- I mean, they're very different, but exotic in that good sense. USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them, and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. <laughs> Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK this is true. have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? Oh yeah! France, 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 though, thank you guys. And Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically, the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schuman's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France uh -huh. and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the union the accuracy in that statement flawless that is actually pretty interesting like yes like these two giants have made peace and i've never even noticed that but without these two giants like i'm pretty sure that the eu would collapse controversial maybe true maybe <laughs> i had actually forgotten and it was just a quick like gut check right there it's like hey france gifted the u.s lady liberty thank you the other thing that I found very interesting is that France actually sleeps in more than the average European or human in this case. And only is doing between six point something to seven hours of work a day. Like, hello, you're doing something right. And then the fact that you guys have this amazing phenomenon just reminded me of like your neighbor Spain. I remember earlier in 2019, I went to Spain for the first time and it was like two in the afternoon, like on a freaking Sunday. And I'm walking around the city and like everything was closed. And I was like, I was like, what the heck? I feel like there's so much to cover when it comes to this. The most mind boggling part out of all of this, honestly, like I was like, what the heck? Are you serious? Was the whole radio regulations. So apparently 40% of the music has to originate in France, 70% of it has to be in French and particularly from the hours of 8 a.m. in the morning to 8 p.m. in the afternoon. So I thought that's pretty crazy, a pretty unique and the very first of its kind of an approach that I have ever heard of to preserve its actual culture. But then again, the French are proud of what they've accomplished and their actual culture, so why not? Definitely the most unique approach I've seen thus far of any country. And when it comes to the food, like I don't even wanna get started. Like I never even noticed how experimental it, like France actually is with their whole meat situation. Barbie does have a point. Not only are the French eating poor, pork, chicken, fish, and everything else in between. Also snails, what was the other one? Quill, hares, like rabbits. Like what is up with these 
these amazing people over in France. I feel like I had to curve that one right there, you know, because it's, it's just odd. The only thing that I didn't hear in there was reindeer, but I'm pretty sure it's just because they're a little bit too far. Otherwise, the French will be biting at it as well. The French have definitely left their mark on the world, and oftentimes I've come across countries that I didn't even know spoke French, like French Guyana, recently found out. Even though I never knew it was called French Guyana, I just thought it was Guyana at first, but hey, at some point they spoke French. Now it's like the first English speaking country in like South America, which is pretty intense. But one thing on the map that I didn't notice is that he did not have Canada highlighted there. Parts of Canada does speak French, certain parts, certain regions. I was also just recently talking to my friend about her growing up speaking French in the country of Haiti, like she was born and raised in Haiti. But with time, they started developing what they call a pidgin language and it eventually ended up sticking and they call it Creole, which is once again, like an alternative version of French. So pretty interesting. It seems like there's truly a reason to be proud of your French. There's been a lot of notable things that you guys have done. So congratulations to such a beautiful country. I hope to visit it much, much much more in the future. By the way, my friends, we have a PO box right over here for this channel in case you want to send over a handwritten letter, postcard, or anything else in between. Just please let me know on my Instagram page. I would love to personally thank you. Don't forget, we have a Patreon page as well where you can help support what we do on this channel. It'd be highly appreciated. If you can't support, that's perfectly fine. Just share this on your Facebook with a friend. I always appreciate it and it helps. Anyways, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos just like this one and stick around. We got more of an amazing selection at the end. And until next time, my friends, hasta la pasta, and I'll be seeing you guys on the flip side. Bye.